of this series, Alive to God in Christ Jesus, taken from Romans chapter 6, verse 11. And it's me, the Reverend Emmanuel Mwesigwa, coming to you from Kakumba Chapel, bringing you this soul moment uh, on this uh, very time. Alive to God with patience, and there is no alternative. Yesterday, we were talking about loving God with all and seeking God with all our hearts. And today, uh, there is a, a kind of a, a setback a little bit. Yesterday, we saw in Jeremiah 29, 13, that God says, Seek me and you will find me. You will seek me and you will find me. But I, I went again and found uh, some kind of uh, contradictory passages in the Bible. I landed on Job. Job, that man that suffered really hard. And uh, today I want to bring a reflection from his book, chapter 23, uh, a few verses at the beginning. And we want to be encouraged to particularly be alive to God, but uh, be alive to God with patience. Sometimes you may say, oh God, I can't find you. Th then you want to look for an alternative. We are saying you must be dead to sin. And so when you are alive to God and you are seeking him and you are not finding him, there is no alternative. There is nowhere else to go. You must keep seeking God. Give him the time he needs. He will show up in his due time. There are many people who have that kind of complaint. But you are telling us to seek God and find him. But we have tried two years. We have tried three months. We have tried three years. We cannot see the answer. We cannot find the answer. And I have two scriptures to encourage you, my dear brother, my dear sister. And this is uh, at the heart of Job's words together with his friends. Of course, his story is very popular. It's very common. He, he suffered and suffered and suffered. And, and uh, he spoke and ran out of words, but he clung. One thing which is common, which is true about Job is that he clung to God. He would not let God go. So this is um, Job chapter 23, from verse 2 to verse 4. Even today, my complaint is bitter. My hand is listless because of my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come to his seat. I would present my case before him. And fill my mouth with arguments. Job is saying, all oh, that I knew where I might find him. In other words, <laughs> he had looked and looked and he had not found God. He had not found his maker. The one to whom he cried and he made a complaint. He, he was not... He was feeling like, really, this is too much. I can't hear anything from God. I can't see him when I close my eyes. I can't see him when I open my eyes. I, I, I go to the dark room and try to cry out and be silent so that I can hear his voice, but I can hear nothing. Oh, that I knew where he might, I might find him. I don't know whether some of you have been in such a place where you feel like you are just hitting a... a, a a glass ceiling or a, a hard ceiling. You are praying, but it seems your prayers are just bouncing back to you, bouncing back to you. You don't know, is God really hearing my prayers? Is he seeing what I'm going through? Does he really, has he understood my pain? That is what Job is reminiscing with. That's what Job is talking about. Does God really see what I'm going through? But friends, in such a time, Many have been tempted to run to the witch doctor. Mm, let me say it verbatim. Many have been tempted to run to the witch doctor. Many have been tempted to run to their ancestors, go to the grave of their grandfather, and start talking to him. Grandpa, wake up and hear what I'm talking about. Many have been tempted to go to all sorts of gods. Some have been tempted to, 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 to carve for themselves gods of silver or gods of wood. I listened to a preacher who was preaching in Nairobi and he said, you know what, these days people have forsaken the God who made us in his own image 
and we have instead made our own God in our own image. So that, that becomes an irony when we have failed to, to look for the God who made us in his image and we instead make our own God in our own image. The one who can condone with our unbelief. The one who does not see what we are doing in secret. The one who does not hear the foul words, the bad words we are speaking. And that is dangerous. You shall have no other God but me. Thus saith the Lord in his very first, and very first commandment. In the second commandment, you shall not make for yourself a carved image and bow down to it. Never. There is no alternative alive to God with patience, and there is no alternative. And that's where I, I love Hosea, the prophet, when he writes to us very comforting words in chapter 6. I'll read them shortly. But this is where we see that there is no alternative. God is God. All the time he is God. Even when you feel like you are hitting a ceiling, don't give up. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. Praise the Lord. These are words of comfort from prophet Hosea, who knows that the people have been wounded. They have been torn, but God will heal. They have been stricken, but God will bind them up. Who bound you? Who struck you? Who wounded you? It may be the Lord who permitted the devil, who permitted the enemy to wound you, to strike you. But don't think of any other alternative. Come to the Lord. And uh, there is a scripture which I'll read later in the week, which talks about the knowledge of God and the miracles that the knowledge of God works. We find a little bit of it here in verse number three, when he says, Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the winter and the spring rains that fall and water the earth. Friends, when God has wounded you, I will still invite you to the same God. We have an inter I mean, interesting similes, interesting examples at home. It is your mother who would cane you and cane you and then call you for dinner. And if you refuse, you have more canes. So, <laughs> you, you've got to accept the discipline of the Lord when he has accepted some pain to come your way. You've got to receive that and then come to the Lord again. And he it is that will bind you. He it is that will heal you. He it is that will restore you. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. That is the testimony of Job. We read from his words when he was calling upon the Lord saying, I wish I knew where he lives. I would take a bus and go there and present myself to him and say, God, look at me. Look at how I am. Come on. But I don't know where God stays. I don't know where to surf for him. If I take a flight, I don't know where to find him, to land and find him. Nonetheless, Job later on reaped the fruit of faithfulness. The fruit of faithfulness. He that did not listen to the wife when the wife said, Curse God and die. He said, I will have no alternative. I will cling to this God who has permitted this calamity to come upon me. He reaped the blessings both here on earth and even in life eternal. And so be encouraged, my brother, my sister. 
There is no alternative. Remain alive to God alone. Patiently wait on him. For there is nothing else we can do but to just cling to the Lord Almighty. We sang a song earlier. We have a friend who loves us so much. Whether we know it or not, God loves us immensely. He loves you. He will not let you down. Thank you, God Almighty, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for drawing us to yourself, even for keeping us firm in faith, even in those times when we doubt, even in those times when we feel like you are lost from us. Give us such a resilience all the days of our lives to remain in you, alive to you and you alone all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you.